Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation, a good one. We have f of x plus f of 1 over 1 minus x equals 1 over x. And we're going to be solving for f of x. So when a problem like this is given to artificial intelligence, any LLM, you know, Copilot, uh, ChatGPT, whatever, can they solve it? You can go ahead and give it a try. Uh, it could give you an alternative solution too, but sometimes it's just going around in circles. Anyway, so to solve this problem, here's what I'm going to do. Since I have f of 1 over 1 minus x in this equation, I'm going to go ahead and replace x with that. What am I talking about? I'm going to replace x with 1 over 1 minus x because that'll give me f of 1 over 1 minus x on the left-hand side, on the left, but then I'll be getting something else here. Let's find out what happens. So let's go ahead and replace x with 1 over 1 minus x. Here, we need to do the same replacement, but this time it's more complicated. Replace this x with 1 over 1 minus x. And on the right-hand side, you're going to replace x with 1 over 1 minus x. So you have to make those replacements everywhere consistently, right? So that's the first substitution we use. And let's see what this gives us. f of 1 over 1 minus x plus now here i need to simplify and to simplify it i can just go ahead and do the simplification here and then just write the final answer instead of going through all these steps that's not necessary if you make a common denominator you're going to get one minus x minus one divided by one minus x this is going to be the denominator one cancels out you get negative x over one minus x if you negate the numerator and the denominator at the same time you get this in the denominator but you got to remember that is the denominator so it's going to be flipped because it's f of 1 over that, which is going to give you f of x minus 1 over x. Awesome. So that's what we're going to get from here. Let's go ahead and erase the work because we've already done it. And on the right-hand side, it's just going to be flipped, and that'll give you 1 minus x, the reciprocal of the reciprocal, right? So now we have another equation. Uh, you can go ahead and call this equation number 1, call this equation number 2, and then we do need a third equation. Now, you can do this in a couple of different ways. For example, you can just go ahead and use the second equation, but I'd like to use the first one because it's simpler. So what should I replace x with? That's the question you need to ask, right? And since we have a single variable like x, we can just uh, think of something that we already have or something that'll help. Well, looks like something new came up here, right? So I'm going to need that, right? If I set up a system of equations, I'm definitely going to need to know what f of x minus 1 over x is, and I don't have any idea. So it would make sense if in the first equation we replace x with x minus 1 over x. Again, this is done in the very first equation in the original one. Let's go ahead and do that, and let me just copy the original equation here for your reference, f of x plus f of 1 over 1 minus x equals 1 over x. Now we're going to replace x with that. It's going to give us f of x minus 1 over x plus f of 1 over 1 minus x minus 1 over x. And on the right-hand side, 1 over x minus 1 over x. So we did all the replacements, replaced x with 1, x minus 1 over x, like this. And let's go ahead and simplify this. f of x minus 1 all over x plus... Here, I'll do the same thing. Make a common denominator, x minus x plus 1. Don't forget to negate the negative 1. Divide by x, but this is just the denominator. 1 over 1, 1 over x, which is going to give us f of x. Beautiful. That means we did the right thing. Okay? And then, on the right-hand side, it's just going to give us the reciprocal. And this is going to be equation number 3. So, now, we have three equations. Let's go ahead and put those together. Let me go ahead and copy the second one, and then I'll copy the first one f of 1 over 1 minus x plus f of x minus 1 all over x equals 1 minus x. Great. This is equation number 2. And equation number 1 is the original. Remember, f of x plus f of, what was the other one? 1 over 1 minus x equals 1 over x. And this is equation number 3. Here's the million dollar question. Can you solve this system? And the answer is yes. Why? Because we have three equations and guess what? We have three variables. Do you see that? We have f of x, f of x. 
we have f of 1 over 1 minus x, f of 1 over 1 minus x, and then we have f of x minus 1 over x and f of x minus 1 over x. If you had a fourth variable, you wouldn't be able to solve it. What would we do? We would probably try to get more equations so that, so basically you do need as many equations as uh, you have variables, otherwise it's not gonna work, okay? So now, oops, the last equation is number one, not number three. And now we're gonna go ahead and solve this system, right? To solve the system, there's a couple of ways to go about it. Since you do want the f of x, you can just use elimination. Uh, from the first two equations, you can eliminate x minus one over x, and then you end up with two variables and then use those. Or there's a better way to do it because of the way this equation is structured. We can go ahead and add all of these equations because that's going to give us everything two times. So we're going to get 2 times f of x minus 1 over x plus 2 times f of x plus 2 times f of 1 over 1 minus x. And when you add these three things, you're going to get x over x minus 1 plus 1 minus x plus 1 over x. And what we need to do on the right-hand side is make a common denominator. But on the left-hand side, we have a 2 in common, so we can go ahead and, you know, take out a 2, like factor the 2 out, f of x minus 1 over x plus f of x plus f of 1 over 1 minus x. And let's go ahead and make a common denominator on the right-hand side that'll look like this. The common denominator will be x times x minus 1. To get that here, you have to multiply this by x. It's going to be x squared. You have to multiply 1 minus x by both of these. So it's going to be like uh, x times x minus 1 times 1 minus x. By the way, these are opposites, so we can kind of negate and square. And then finally, you're going to multiply by x minus 1. And all of that is divided by x times x minus 1. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and simplify the right-hand side a little bit more. And then we're going to divide by 2. So but let me go ahead and do this first. When you multiply these two things, you can kind of think of it as negative x times x minus 1 squared, which is going to look like this. x squared minus x times x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then uh, plus x minus 1 all over x squared minus x. And then let's go ahead and simplify here. x squared minus x cubed plus 2x squared, and then minus x plus x minus 1 all over x squared minus x. And finally, that should give us negative x cubed if you write everything in standard form. Those two cancel out. We end up with positive three x squared from here and here, and then minus one divided by x squared minus x. I, I don't think uh, the AI gave me the same answer. Uh, so this multiplied by one half should equal the sum of these three functions. So let's go ahead and write those down again. f of x minus 1 over x plus f of x plus f of 1 over 1 minus x. By the way, there's a cycle here you probably notice like a cyclic function uh, because you end up with f of x anyways. Now, we have this sum of three functions. How do we solve for f of x from here? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and write the f of x first because I'm going to show you something that will help us and it'll be the second equation. So let me go ahead and write this one next. And finally, I'm kind of switching them around so to make it look like the original problem. And this will give us basically, you can go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by negative 1 as well or just negative 2. Um, let's, let's see. If you distribute to 2, you're going to get 2x squared minus 2x, but I, I want to negate it to make a positive x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1 divided by 2x minus 2x squared. Yes, that can be done. I don't know if it was necessary. I just felt like doing it. Now, this part we don't want, right? But we already know what it is. Look, look at the second equation. That's exactly what it is. So, Here's what we're going to take. This expression, the sum of the other two functions, is equal to 1 minus x. Right here, this is 1 minus x. Make sense? So you add the three equations, everything appears twice. Divide by 2, you get the sum of the three functions. And then you know the sum of the two because you have the two-way uh, two sums. 
and then take the good one, uh, whichever one you need, and it'll give you f of x. So f of x plus 1 minus x equals this. Therefore, to find f of x, we do need to subtract 1 minus x or add x minus 1. Let's just go, go ahead and add x minus 1 to both sides, which is the opposite, and that should give us x minus 1. But we still need to do more work because if you make a common denominator, it should look like this, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1 plus x minus 1 will be multiplied by 2x minus 2x squared. It's okay, I can just distribute it and the whole thing will be divided by the same denominator. And then from here, f of x should be, if I didn't make any mistakes, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1 plus 2x squared minus 2x cubed. And then I have minus 2x plus 2x squared all over 2x minus 2x squared. Let's go ahead and simplify the numerator. I have negative x cubed. Uh oh, that became negative again. These two. And then I have the, uh, let's see, uh, this is 4x squared minus 3. That'll make positive 1x squared. So I've taken care of this, 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 and that. Finally, I have the minus 2x and then plus 1. Okay, that is divided by 2x minus 2x squared. I don't think it's anything special. Again, you can negate and make a positive uh, x cubed if you want. It's not super important, but you can do that if you want it. And then it'll look like this, kind of looking more, uh, more in standard form, right? So that will be out of x, and you can definitely test it out by way of substitution if you don't believe the solution, okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI, my other channel that focuses on complex numbers. And bye-bye.